how women really need to assert themselves in the workplace because the consensus at this event was that uh, women are not forceful enough and if they are then they are seen as super aggressive how does one really go about achieving that balance and what uh, systems can startups and entrepreneurs really put in place uh, to ensure that there is parity in the workplace uh, that's what uh, we found out at this session which had uh, serial entrepreneur mukesh bansal it had the Jani Ghosh uh, uh, from uh, Intel as well as uh, Anjali Bansal from TPG. Let's listen in. It's something like very complicated topic. You know, some people don't even pay attention to this. Uh, for uh, in my personal journey, I think just my sensitivity and awareness uh, has increased tremendously over the last ten years. As almost probably, you know, uh, just blissfully ignorant. You know, I would have probably denied that they are different. You know, or, or would have grabbed out just very simple challenges, you know, about you know, different requirements and things people do for increasing diversity in the workplace. But uh, when it comes to leadership, there are some, I think, fundamental, deep challenges. Um, the way I process it, it's, uh, you know, most of, it starts with the top leadership teams. You know, most of the top leadership, in the, you know, historically and now is very heavily uh, male. And, you know, I mean, we all know that, you know, the men and women think differently process things differently, you know, intuitive thinking versus logical uh, or what not. It is, they are different way of approaching a problem. Now, in any environment, um, you are, in order to blend in and to succeed, you have to be similar to how what the majority is. And that just leads to a, a huge ripple effect across the organization that certain kind of behavior approach is rewarded, other is not. Uh, certain behavior, it's coming from a male employee, it will be initiative taker, you know, assertive, willing to go against the grain, you know, willing to fight the system, great person, you know, promoting. Same thing from a women employee, it's uh, probably not very collaborative, not willing to listen, not figuring how to blend in, how to, you know, work the system. It just, things are seen differently. Um, first few years when I was an individual contributor, it was okay. In fact, it was, it was getting me noticed, it was getting the work done, I moved up the ranks pretty quickly started, uh, got my first management role. And then all of a sudden, I became a bad person. She, she doesn't work well with people. She intimidates people, scares people. And I was like, what, what is going on? Because I haven't changed anything. This is who I have been at that point for maybe, you know, I started working around 20. So I was like, this is who I was for 20 years of my life. What changed? And, and this was not coming from the men in my group alone. In fact, the men in my group were not complaining that much. It was the women in my group who were complaining a lot more. You know, you, you are doomed if you do, and you are doomed even more if you don't do. So what's the balance, right? And this is where I really, really value the power of mentorship. Because this is the time when mentors come to your rescue. And I had lots of chat with my mentors and it was, I remember, a male mentor who sat me down and said, the problem is not you. The problem is the people you're working with and the expectations they have of your gender. And you are absolutely not mapping to any of those expectations. But this is where I challenge you to go back to your manager, to go back to HR and start bringing this up. Don't, don't take it lying down. Start asking these questions. Where's the problem? I think if I were to just take a step back and say leaders actually have to be assertive. So it's not the what you do, it's the how you do it. So what is assertive? It means you have a point of view, you are confident, you state your point of view, and you kind of stick to your guns and you make stuff happen. That is assertive leadership. Now, if the question is how do you do it? And that's where style modulation comes in, in my view. And also modulating your style to your environment, to your organization culture. Many of you are entrepreneurs, so you're actually going to set the organization culture in your own companies. But if you are actually the, the receiver of a culture, so to speak, then um, you know, either you modulate your style and become effective in that culture, or you opt out. And that's, that's the reality. And uh, modulation of style doesn't mean that you're not true to yourself, certainly. I mean, you, first of all, you have to have integrity to yourself and only then can you really be the best for your team, for your company and so on and so forth. Um, 
So it's, it's the, the difference between what you do and what you get as an outcome and how you get it done. And sometimes you actually have to get it done through collaboration, through working through people, um, without breaking a lot of glass. Sometimes what happens within the organization, the dialogue happens at a certain level, you know, talking about performance or results or I would say very superfluous advice. And it's not even the person's fault because no one is, you know, talking about the real conversation. So I think somewhere probably you need to break the ice and uh, start those conversations as well that, you know, as simple as that, I'm not able to speak of my mind in a meeting. And there's a lot before a performance appraisal happens. And you may not always find sympathetic ears, but you'll be surprised at how many people are also, you know, from manager's point of view, they want, everybody wants like very strong workforce, very strong, you know, diversity in the organization. They want people to do well, They're really well-intentioned people, but they also don't know where to start the conversation. So it ends up happening very transactional. So if you can, if you feel something's holding you back, and you just reach out to you know folks in your organization. If you may have to talk to two, three, four people, but sooner or later you will find somebody who can really have the right conversation with you, like kind of conversation we are having here, right? And that can be the icebreaker. Then every time you can follow up on that and build upon that. And I mean, Anjali is absolutely right. You know, leadership eventually is about assertiveness, but assertiveness needs to be very individualistic. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.